So you guys, welcome to- We're out there in the multiverse somewhere. <laughs> once a month call. Um, we're really lucky today. We have Amber Swainer. Swainer, Swainer? I never say it right. Swainer. Swainer, there you go. Amber Swainer here today. And she is with Soul Seed and the author of USA Today and- Wall Street Journal, bestseller, Unleashed. You can find that over and maybe I'll even find a link for that in case you guys want to buy it. She's going to talk to us about brand alignment for authors, you guys, because none of you have a brand before you get here with your book. And it's so very important to make sure everything's in alignment. So Amber, welcome. Thank you. Don't mind me. I'm speaking a lot these days. And so the camera is always different if I'm going to stand and jump around or just... <laughs> I'm planning to stay seated. Do you have a standing desk? No, but sometimes I just get up and dance. Oh, um, okay. I have a standing desk I never use. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Good to know because they're kind of an investment. So we'll see if I decide. Well, you know, know what they are, but I found when I was standing there that I actually would cock one hip. So it was worse that, you know what I mean? So it was almost yeah. worse. I was, I was totally out of alignment. So take it away. I'm going to go find the Great. link for your uh, book in case. People Fabulous. Buy it. Thank you for having me. And as Juliet shared, my background is in business and brand growth, brand strategy. And also over time, I evolved to really work with the leaders behind the brand in transformational coaching. And that's what I cover in my book. And so today I'm looking to help bridge that gap for authors, for you to be thinking about what is your authentic brand message? How do you more authentically connect with your audience and really look at whether you're pre-book, you have a book, it's already out, wherever you're at in the process to look at how to make a bigger impact and be more strategic through that process. So I will share uh, my screen in a little bit, but I just want to start with a little bit of a story and um, you can find it in the book. So when I was growing up, one of my big goals was I wanted to become Miss America. Might seem funny if you know me today, because today I'm a front person in a metal band, which doesn't exactly correlate to Miss America, but I wanted to go to college and I learned that you could earn scholarship money I ultimately became the first generation in my family to graduate high school even, and then also go to college. So I wanted to compete so that I could earn scholarship money. And I was also really impressed with the confidence and poise of contestants. So I went to college, I studied abroad, I even volunteered abroad in other countries. I was doing all these things to essentially build my resume, check the boxes of what I thought would make a great Miss America. So I came back to the States um, it was my senior year of college. I had two years left to start competing in the pageants. And I went into that world, started doing it, and quickly learned that the largest portion of the score is talent. Now, even though I grew up singing along to my cassette tapes to Nirvana and John Jett and Pat Benatar, I had no classical training. A lot of contestants were dancers, singers, very talented, played instruments. And I just didn't have that background. So I gave it my best foot forward. I always rocked it in the interview. I did great in the onstage speaking. Unfortunately, that was only worth 5% of the score. So it didn't get me very far. But I tried and I tried harder and harder. And I worked with pageant consultants. And I tried harder to, to fit the box of what I needed to do to win. And I noticed myself over those few years feeling more and more deflated more and more like the harder I try to be what they want, the further I get, I can't even win a local pageant. How will I ever become Miss America? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so there's some re relating here, the times we try harder to be what people want us to be. So for the final pageant ever, I was present to that. And I just decided I probably am not going to win because I haven't been winning all along. So what do I have to lose? by choosing my joy, being my true self, just getting out there and actually singing what I think I'm good at. And so that day on stage, I walked onto stage with my seven inch heels and my sparkly plant leather pants and a sparkly top. And I sang a version of Pat Benatar's Heartbreaker. So if you don't know the song, it's like pretty rock and roll from the eighties. Your love is like a tidal wave spinning over my head. Okay, that song. 
So the looks on the faces, I will never forget as some people in the, the, the pageant moms and directors in the auditorium were a little bit like this, <laughs> like, what is this pageant talent? Needless to say, I didn't win, but I gained something so much bigger that day. And it took me really years later in my journey as I moved into my career in television advertising and I did a number of sales jobs. I started a brand strategy marketing firm and then moved into business coaching. And it really wasn't until years later when I was doing the deeper threads of brand work, which is what we're going to be talking about today, that I was able to pinpoint that as such an important moment for me in my journey that came all the way full circle for me in becoming an author. And that was recognizing the moments that I chose to step deeper into my authenticity because I realized what it was actually costing me to not do that. And, and what I mean is it was costing me something so much greater by pretending to be who I thought I was supposed to be in the pageant world. Now, I didn't win the pageant crown, but I gained so much more. And that was my confidence, my truth, my authenticity. And interestingly, even at the end of that day, a few people came up to me as I got off stage and said how awesome it was and how much they appreciated it. And it was only a sliver of people, but that right there is another one of those lessons about how when we are in our truth and authenticity, it's not about being all things to everyone. It's about resonating with that niche. And so that was, has been really fun for me in this journey with creating my book, being able to look back and see how this has played out in parts throughout my journey. And I just want to invite for you to think of that about where in your journey, are you waiting for someone to give you the crown, to give you permission to say you are the author, you can make an impact. You do have a message and where you can just claim it and choose to put on your own crown, whatever that looks like for you, because this is about you walking more boldly and powerfully in that you try to be all things to everyone, it's watered down, it gets missed. But when you narrow your focus, the wider your message and book and impact will go. Can I, can I ask you a question real quick? Please so do. For, for, yeah, for a lot of people, I love what you just said, because um, I just I just actually wrote on LinkedIn Live, it takes so much more energy to be inauthentic than it does to actually be authentic. What about those people who are hiding behind a corporate brand? Because that's what I did at first. I was afraid to step out. So I hid behind that corporate brand. And then I realized that people were hiring us because of me. So I had to get out there. What would you now, say to those people? So perfect segue. Actually, I'm gonna, what I'm going to say is this authenticity is the path forward for everything in business and in leadership. And I'm actually going to segue over to, not to divert the question, but this is kind of the perfect lead in to over to um, the slides that I wanna share here awesome. to address that because this is extremely important that comes up for so many people, especially in corporate world, people get blocked. So can you see my presentation? Uh, yes. okay, so I love that Juliet's laughing. So, okay, so I'm going to get to Juliet's question here in a moment, but we're talking about how to ignite your author brand. And so when I published my book, I talked to my local Barnes and Noble and I had them get my book there. And then of course I went and did my own photo shoot. That, that's me just being my authentic brand. There you go. Um, had to get my pictures in the bookstore. Um, I already talked a little bit about who I am, what I do. We can round back to that at the end. Also the front person in a metal band. Um, and today we're talking about why you need to be more authentic now, what the foundation for your brand is, how to let your genius lead the way, how to become more strategic with your book and how to be in action. So here is to answer Juliet's question, which is perfect. What does about corporate people who might be feeling that, or even anyone, if you're feeling that it's not okay to be more of your true self, being authentic does not necessarily mean that you need to come into the office or to your team or all over social media and reveal absolutely everything top to bottom that's going on if you're having challenges in your relationship, health issues, if you're struggling with something, you don't have to do that. Of course, it's important that you're supported, that you know your safe communities where to do that. 
but this is where sometimes people misconstrue authenticity and the journey in leadership and business is what it's about is really understanding your values and living and leading in alignment with that. And maybe for you, it is candid transparency in every aspect of your life. That is some, are some people's brands. But if that really doesn't feel aligned for you, that's okay. It doesn't mean that, that you need to do candid transparency about absolutely everything top to bottom. But what are those values? Are they, is it around empathy? Is it team building? Is it, so for me, I realize that my top personal values are authenticity and personal freedom. And for me, personal freedom is to defined for me as create any space that I'm in, I'm able to show up as who I am, not feel like I need to wear different personas and I'm creating spaces for my team to do the same. And so I set the definition of what it meant for, for me and for our team. And now any decision is filtered through that. So it makes it easier to live into my values. And so here are some recent headlines. Everybody is now, so I, I'm loving this so much actually, because this is a thread that's been true for me for years that I've spoke about and taught about authenticity, but it's now like the business world is actually finally catching up. So, so it's just, that's just a personal side note. All the years that I, self-doubted and I gaslighted myself thinking, does anyone take this authenticity thing seriously? Does this seem like a soft topic? And wouldn't you know, isn't that interesting that when I was finally ready, the year I put out my book, this is literally one of the most talked about topics this year, Forbes, entrepreneur, all everywhere. And all the articles are why authenticity is the most important asset that a company can possess. I saw lots of headlines around why that's one of the most important things for leaders to possess. A uh, Harvard business study that just came out talked about that for C-suite positions, it has now become less about the ability to manage efficiency and finances and more C-suite positions are hiring people for what used to be called soft skills. And that is the ability to uh, be authentic, have empathy, um, and there's one article called it being a fish out of water ability that those leaders lead better. And what that means is they're the vulnerability and their ability to be authentic and acknowledge what they're not great at and what they need help with. And, and this was, has been studied extensively and especially through the pandemic that there's that element of authenticity in your, in your job that helps make you more successful. And the reasons are as a brand, so if you're an individual, let's say you're so if you're leading a group, or even if you're a solopreneur, you have a brand. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So when you're authentic as a brand that builds trust with your audience, it allows you to create genuine connections, greater alignment, engagement, respect. Organizations that foster authentic behavior are more likely to have engaged, motivated employees. So as a leader, when you think of yourself as a, if you're as a leader, again, even if, if you are a one person and you say, well, I work as a coach or consultant, I don't have a team, you're still leading your, your, your community. And when you're authentic, this encourages more open sharing. I would say for anyone who does coaching or consulting, it helps your client be more open so they can get a better result, right? If you can't see behind the veil, it's really difficult to, to help them. Um, also, it's more like it, it has been tied to preventing burnout, the more authentic that we can be with ourselves and our teams. And then as an author, same things. It helps you build relatability, credibility, genuine connection when you're being authentic. So do you feel that answered the question, Juliet? To a point. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me, I mean, yes. Yes, it did. Um, and, and it did from the standpoint that um, when you hide behind that corporate brand, people don't know who you are and, and they're hiring you, especially in that coaching space you were talking about. Thank you for adding that. Absolutely. You're still a brand within a brand. If you work for an employer, you 
work for them, but who you are goes with you wherever you go. And I actually have a framework that I think will help people coming up in a little bit. So, so my book is titled Unleashed and it's really all about authenticity, authenticity. And for me, that means being free from chains of expectation and the conditioning and everyone else's ideas of how you're supposed to be, because it makes so much more available when you can come to that place of values alignment and being in flow. And also as an author, I, it will help you come into your vision and voice and your path and track for the difference you want your book to make and why you're writing it. So then the question is, well, what pre prevents people from choosing this? There's a whole lot of things that can come up with that. Fear, this, I, this you know, limiting beliefs, so many things. And so I created a framework that really can help you start to recognize if you feel that you want to be more authentic or show more of a side of yourself, but you're holding back. It's often rooted in one of these three things, either in what you're thinking about yourself, about being authentic. You're having some thought around your mindset that you might be telling yourself, well, if I do this, then that, but usually that's tied to a deeper belief or how you feel. So is, is your issue with your mindset that you have a negative mindset and you're waking up and saying, well, I didn't, uh, today is just going to be as bad as yesterday. Is there something holding you back in how you feel like some belief that you have that if you speak up boldly, it will make people think that you're too loud and bossy. That's really just a limiting belief. Right. And that's planted there from conditioning, which I talk a lot about in the book, things like, um, well, if I'm a musician, no one will take me seriously in business. Or if I'm not successful and making money as a musician, do I just look like a deadbeat artist? Or if, uh, right, there's all these different limiting beliefs. And then there's the what we do. Sometimes we just need to be in action and go do the thing. So when we look at, kind of, at, at creating an authentic brand, often so, so there's a law of polarity, which says for the potential for one, there's a potential for the opposite. For the potential for, for, for lack, there's a potential for abundance. For the, if there's the potential for love, there's the potential for hate. It's the same with anyone growing a business or a brand that for the potential to be fully authentic and aligned, there's the potential to be inauthentic. And you get to choose which end of that spectrum you want to go to. And often what I see happens is people can be really strong in one or two of these areas, but something's off in one of them or different times a block comes up. And so what I invite for people is if something's out of alignment or not flowing, just pause and evaluate if you look at yourself as if you're outside of yourself. And say, okay, is this something going on in my mindset? Is it a limiting belief how I feel? Or is it something off in my strategy? Because clients will come to us, to me a lot with thinking that there's something wrong with their marketing strategy. And actually when we backtrack it, there's, they haven't gotten clear in really how they feel about the work they do in the world and why their brand exists. And there's usually something off in, in one of those other areas. So take a screenshot of this, if this is helpful. We won't sit here and go through this. But for those who are business owners in the room, which a lot of people who are authors are, you have somehow have a business tied to your book. It's okay if you don't, uh, but this is an alignment assessment that you can do for your business. Again, take a screenshot. I'll just walk you through how this works. And this can help you recognize where you might have blocks. We're, we're talking about brand but brand is really the foundation that feeds the whole of your business. And sometimes it can be difficult to uncover where your actual gap is, where your, your problem is. And right. And sometimes people come to me and they have a really strong brand. They have a mission, the vision, the values, but they're not making any money because they're not doing anything for sales or marketing. And I talk with a lot of authors and I see that sometimes it can be confusing about where their gap is. So how you do this is look at each area. So when you think about yourself as the leader, as, as the author, think about yourself as the author. What do you think about that? Rate yourself one to 10. How, how do you, would you rate yourself that 
You have a really good mindset that you know that you're meant to be an author. How do you feel about it? Are you waffling? And maybe you're having limiting beliefs about if you can be a success, give yourself a score. Action, what action are you taking to actually write the book or publish the book? So you just go through that for each of these areas. Your, your brand strategy, the sales that you do in your business, your systems and operations and people management who support your business, your mindset. What do you actually think about mindset? What do you feel about mindset? And what are you doing about mindset? I put that in there because that alone is such a huge one that until you get conscious of it, a lot of people don't realize how much they're waking up. They're, they're preventing themselves from winning the day before it even begins. So this is a tool that can help you start to break down where might some gaps be in your journey as building a brand as an author, because it is a holistic journey. And this really relates to those who have a business related to their book. If you somehow want your book to support your work in the world, even if you're a team of one, all these things go into it. If you're like, well, I want to have a book so I can make money, you have a business. And these are the core elements that go into that business. Just curious, um, Christy or Juliet, if there's any like questions or comments on that before I move on. Thoughts on how it might help your community. No, I love that you gave me the assessment. I just screenshotted it so I could upload it into LinkedIn for them and tell them to take it. But yeah, this is, so this is not only getting into your authenticity, it's a little bit of getting rid of that imposter syndrome that goes with it. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. It allows you to get out of overwhelm and look at it objectively. I think of it as bird's eye view. Imagine that your business were here in your hands. Again, I'm calling your, your book, your business. If your book is what you expect to drive your business. And so you're just observing it. You're just like, I'm just observing and tuning in with what do I think, feel, and do with this judgment-free because there's, it's not that anything's right or wrong. It's just a tool to support the journey. And it, that can help us get out of that imposter syndrome when we just let it, let ourselves be curious about it. Uh, Amber, I love this. I, I think that we, as humans, we get so wrapped up in our business because it does become so much a part of ourselves, especially if you're a really heart centered entrepreneur. And this will help when you can step back and go, oh, okay, I see where I'm a little off the mark without, without, like you said, the judgment, how can I be more authentic and aligned? I love that. It's, I think that is a huge thing that people forget. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I um, thank you for saying that because I think that's well needed in this world for, our, for us entrepreneurs. Yeah, good, good. I hope that's glad to hear that. It's, it can be so overwhelming when there's so many aspects that need to be in place when we put a book out into the world. And so our hope, our intention here is to just chunk it down to help you stay focused on what areas need some attention. So let's shift into really helping everyone connect a bit more with what your brand authentically is. And so I want to, I'm doing an exercise and you don't need to type answers or anything, just kind of make notes to yourself. There's no right or wrong. This is just an example of, um, to see what could pop for someone. So when I show you the image, just think of if you have some kind of reaction, you don't have to say it or, or add to the, the comments, but just make note to yourself when, when you see the brand, is there any kind of reaction? So we've got Apple, we've got a lot of really popular brands and figures, Oprah, McDonald's, Walmart, obviously very notable people and brands, Donald Trump, the Disney company, Starbucks. I think this is our last one. And so I'd invite you to consider when you do that exercise, what stands out. And usually when I've got the room of people, I get feedback like, well, some I have a visceral reaction, some I love, some I don't align with. And again, the exercise is that there's none that are right or wrong. It's that every brand and person, thought leader exists to serve a certain end of the market, it, it serve people. And it's not about 
being that you need to be concerned about being divisive, but it's just about being a beacon for those that your brand is meant to serve. Your brand creates a feeling. It's not the logos, fonts, and colors. Those are assets of your brand. However, the things that actually move the needle that help you sell books, get paid, make bigger impact is what people think and feel about your business. It's what they would say about your business. If you're not in the room, would they make a referral for you or not? And it's by getting intentional to really consider what do you stand for and who do you serve that helps you channel this a bit more focused. Like I teach about in my book and I, we're all like, I realize not everyone will align with what I have to say. That's okay. My lesson is take away from it for yourself. How can you be more authentic and be more confident? And I share about that and to teach about that through my book journey to help you recognize where you might be holding back and, and not realizing it. And a lot of those pitfalls, I call them, that end up happening is we think we don't want to exclude or offend anyone. And what I would invite is that if you just being true in your brand doesn't mean that it's that you're trying to offend anyone, you can't be responsible for controlling everyone's reactions, right? It's just impossible. It's a beautiful, we're made up of a bazillion different opinions and types of people in the world. That's really exhausting to try to manage everybody else's opinions. Oh, Amber, I have to, I have to wholeheartedly agree with that. I think that I've noticed as a book developer, like I so often have to say, I can't tell who you're talking to here. You're talking to this audience and here, well, my book's for everybody. No, it's not. <laughs> so I, you have to get clear on that. And, um, and then usually what I do is I say, if you have if you have three audiences, write three separate books that each focus on that audience so that you're, if you don't want to exclude, but don't try to do it all together because it doesn't work. Yeah. So thank you for That's saying awesome that. Wisdom. Awesome. Yeah. And you know what else is really true here is, is I tell our, uh, our book people all the time, there are probably, uh, you know, at least a thousand people who do what you do. Uh, people are going to hire you because of who you are and how they resonate with you. So one person might be offended by what you say, but 10 people may love it and hire you. So you just, you have to have a really firm grasp on um, who your people are and who they aren't. Because when you take people are that on that aren't your people, it's a really rough ride for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, to all that. And it's really amazing when we can have networks, like we're in networks together, where it just becomes about then supporting and making referrals to someone who could be a better fit. It, mm -hmm. it all comes back around. It's good for everybody. Love that. A few other of the big pitfalls are people thinking they're too small to have a brand. Again, here, even if you're an individual person, everyone has a brand. So no, even if you haven't thought about it, you do have a brand. And so you get the opportunity to be more intentional with defining what that brand is. Um, oh, something I wanted to say, actually, Julia, this is what you made me think of this. Um, to anyone who's watching and thinking, anyone else who may relate to being a bit sensitive or heart-centered or feeling that fear, I will share, I was extremely sensitive and was that person where even through high school and my twenties, if someone didn't like me or said something bad or picked on me and we got a, you know, a lot of online criticism as a musician, I would feel awful for weeks. I, I would cry for days. I would shut down. So I'm sharing this from my lived experience as one of those people who has transformed. Like it's possible. I'm just saying that some people don't have this issue. Amazing. If you're like, I'm going to be myself, I don't need to do work. Okay, cool. There's a lot of us out there who've been told a whole lot of ways we're supposed to be. And so I just really want to make that known because you don't know me and I'm skipping a lot, but I'm telling you, you know, I started my business seven years ago. It was just me. And boy, did I learn a whole lot. I had a whole lot of things happen, but at one point I grew it to a million dollar business and team member, um, 10 team members. And that took stepping into leadership. Like that took walking the walk of everything I'm teaching. And I'm not saying it's easy. However, it becomes easier the more you do it. 
and I would never not do it. Like, I'm so damn grateful that I chose to step into the fear and trust this and like do it. So just so if anyone else is like, yeah, sounds great, but she seems real confident and all that stuff. No, you well, know what the, you know, Amber, here's the thing. If you're an author and, and this may not be the most empathetic thing to say, but you need to toughen up because the reviews sometimes can be really tough. I remember with one of my books, someone said, one of my mystery novels, someone said, this is a great story, but who edited it? A monkey. And I was so hurt um, because, you know, I didn't know that the editor that I chose wasn't that good. I wasn't like I didn't have it edited, but it's, uh, this is when you're putting yourself out there, this is very personal, but you also have to toughen up because I would say probably 50%, maybe even more of the people who critique you have never done what you've done. So there's there's a flip side to toughen up and be proud that you put yourself out there. Thank you. Heck yes. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Love it. So another one that comes up is we think we don't have money to invest in the brand. And and what I encourage is you can't afford not to, it doesn't mean you need to go necessarily hire people to help you with it, but do that, the work, if you can get even free or low cost resources, books, of course, I'm plugging my own book, but seriously, (laughs) like I can say that because it's been pretty cool. The feedback I've gotten from people Um, who've now started businesses and made changes in their businesses. Also, I hope any author takes that away. Um, I guess it more uh, relates to nonfiction, but just how cool that is that your book can actually help someone. And even if it's fiction, hey, that like, that's awesome too, because it's bringing joy and it's bringing, you know, people taking breaks away from devices. Um, So don't let that hold you back. Don't let the money thought you can invest as you go. Oh, Yes. You know what, Amber, I'm glad you said that. I Fiction is transformative too. I mean, I was a teacher for many years and I can't tell you how many times a book changed someone's life. A kid would read a book and it would be, and it would start a whole discussion and exploration and in the, in the group. And it was kind of amazing to watch that, that change, that transformation happen just from some really interesting thoughts. So don't doubt yourself if you have fiction, because that can, mm. that can be just as powerful. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for calling that out. Cause now that you say that I'm actually reflecting and thinking the same, like some of those fiction stories and what I learned from them and opens your perspective. Awesome. I think I'm so entrenched lately with the, the nonfiction personal development. world. Oh, yeah. Of course. And this is so important. This is so important what you're sharing here. Yeah. And you know what? Fiction can be very cathartic. When I wrote my fiction novels, I was going around killing people, but man, I had no anger when I was done. (laughs) Mm, Nice. Yeah. And yeah, it's a really good, uh, for me, it's a really good breakaway sometimes from all the working on our, I love working on businesses, love working on myself. And sometimes you need a break and that's okay too. (laughs) So, okay. Shifting into, well, how do you let your genius lead the way? It's all about tapping into yourself a bit more. So as a pop quiz, if you were to think of your favorite service provider, anyone that comes to mind, it could be a massage therapist, mechanic, daycare provider, pet sitter, just a few favorite service providers that you've worked with over the year, anyone who's provided you a service, your editor, your coach, whatever it is. And notice why are they your favorite? And make, and this is an exercise I love where I make notes on who are the ones that stand out and I consistently want to refer business to and work with over and over again. So if you think about that, usually it's not because they're cheap. I've never had someone give that answer. When I ask this in a room, they don't say cheap. They usually say things like trustworthy. They, I feel safe with them. They're empathetic. They're understanding. It's because people, ultimately, if you reframe this, they're not buying your products and service and they're not even buying your book. They're buying your brand. They're buying your brand. A brand is what provides value and people want value. It's about the experience you create. And so how to create that experience is connecting who you are, what your brand stands for, connecting it to your audience. And not to sound harsh, but nobody cares about your book. 
they care about the impact that's in it for them. They care about the story. They care about, so think relating, so impact would be more related to nonfiction, relating this to fiction. They care about um, what's this experience, this journey that the book's going to take them on, right? How are they going to feel? Is it, um, is it a romance and juicy and they can't wait to read it on girls, you know, trip or a trip to the beach or is it suspenseful and advent or adventure? It's that. So it helps to lean into that because this is what will inform your messaging and how you talk about your, your book and how you market it to the world. It gives you things to talk about that are interesting. So it becomes less about, here's my book, buy it. It becomes more about, I'm taking you on this great adventure. Are you up for an adventure? Are you looking for something to, you know, light up your world again? So I see Christy and Juliet shaking their heads. I don't know if there's anything you want to add from all the coaching you provide your authors. Oh, I, I worked with a, I worked with a, Juliet and I worked with a gentleman who, um, am I allowed to say his name? <laughs> uh, who did this book that scared the oh, yes. out of me. Yes. And it, it, because it's all about this technology and the way technology is headed and it's all real. And it was terrifying. It was worse than Terminator because Terminator was just a movie, but that was, this was like a fiction book, but not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. And he sent me, I actually said to him, is this real? And he sent me a video from one of the big aerospace. I can't, I can't think of who it is right now, but it's mm. actually a whole movie about the murder bots that are in his book and they're actually, it's a talk, it's a real scientific wow. talk where they're talking about this and doing a demo. And I was like, oh my God, wow. like, I had no idea technology was like this. So relating it to that, no, right? It's not that people care about the book, but it's people who maybe who care about um, ethics and technology or care about uh, what's the line we could be crossing with the advancement of science and tech, right? It's That's what I hear you speaking into. <laughs> It, well, yeah. that, that, and he is very into STEM for women. He's former uh, NSA and uh, uh, a very uh, intelligence-based mm. profession. And he believes that women are better at uh, cybersecurity than men because of their intuition. So the whole thing is really interesting that you would oh, think so that's about. That's an interesting reframing how we think about yeah. um, tech and intelligence. Yeah. Amazing. So there, um, the takeaway, our opportunity is to, to unlock your genius. It's about unlocking your genius so that you can get to that point of really standing in what your brand is because the book is a cool tool, but it's again about delivering the message and the impact about what would make someone want to pick it up. So here's another one you might want to screenshot if you've been kind of thinking through this, um, particularly if you're an entrepreneur or in business somehow related to your book. This is one exercise you can make columns. I've got it here as circles. Um, there's also a version of this called Ikigai. So you can make a list of everything that you enjoy that gives you purpose. Everything you're good at as it relates to uh, your, your career, your business, what you get paid for, or what's the best ROI for time spent, and then like what the world needs or what's that bigger impact or mission. And this can be helpful to help people really hone in on, on really your genius, but not just what you're good at, but what drives you and what you feel passionate about. A lot of times I end up working with people who will say, well, I'm really good at this or I'm getting really paid well for this, but I actually feel called in X, Y, Z direction. And um, I've noticed that with a lot of author friends I talk with that um, they, they feel that, that they've had some sort of pivot at their, in their life at some point. And by getting aware of, of this, it's not just maybe about what you get paid for or not just what you love doing. It's about bringing it all into alignment and connecting all of that into your brand and really standing in firmly in that place. Amber, that is, I, I'm just having this epiphany here, what you just said, because that's directly connected to when you are really clear on your brand and you are clear on what you're, you've got on the screen here, you attract the people you're aligned with. Mm -hmm. And that, that then the impact becomes exponential without, totally. yeah, it's amazing. I'm so, I'm so, I'm just having chills. 
This well, you again. are you are definitely coaching your people well. I think we have the same thoughts around all of this. Yeah. Here's the other thing about it, and we find this when we do the quizzes with people, is if in your mind you're not clear on this, then your message isn't going to be clear. And the people you attract when you're unclear are going to be unclear as well. So there's there's almost this domino effect of I'm not getting clients who I'm aligned with because you don't know who, who and what you're aligned with. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So um, are we good for time? Another 10 minutes or so? We're, we're good. Go. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to shout out a couple quick things just to help people, no matter who you are, what stage of the journey you're at, how this process, how it translates for a non-author and an author. And um, real quick, Amazing woman, Kaz had a single location bakery in Madison, Wisconsin, which is where I'm primarily based. They were forced to close during COVID, almost went out of business. She gave me, by the way, she's given me permission to share all this. She's so amazing. She invested her last amount of money into coaching and strategy. And we focused on everything I shared in this talk around getting to the heart of her brand. What is, brings her the most joy? Where can they make the most money? Where can they stand out in the market? And long story short is that she pivoted during COVID, even when they were forced to be closed and pivoted some of their offers and they were able to come back more profitable through that year and a half through the pandemic. And she so then she profitably sold her business. And I share this because sometimes we think these brand things are a nice to do, but we don't tie the necessity to how it actually translates to, to the results. It's all the things, and you may or may not care about becoming a bestseller, but it's all those things that got me to that point. It's, it's all this. And then an example of Melissa, who is an author, similar. Um, she had a successful thriving business, but she wanted to go another direction and really be her personal brand, which aligned with what she, who she is as an author. And it was the same thing. We worked the system. We went through the brand strategy process. It helped her get out of major debt, start paying herself more. And now she's out there being her authentic self in the world. So anyone here who might watch, who has, who is thinking about making a pivot, um, it's possible to do it. I know that it can feel scary if you're like, well, I've had this corporate career over here doing this, but I actually see myself doing this other thing and I want to write a book in that direction. It is possible to make that pivot. And all these things that we're talking about with brand, you can apply it to wherever you're at right now. Even if you don't have, you're like in a one business or career and you want to go another direction, do these exercises imagining as if that other brand, it's going to help you make it real. So I think that helps people sometimes see the real life examples. So I'm going to move into some strategy. Does that sound good? Some, some like tactical, okay, like how do I, what do I do with this? Consider how will your, okay, so I should have, I always, I'm relating this to business so much. And I know I probably should have said, okay, how can I relate this to some of the, more of the fiction authors? Um, but I guess that's just the lens I look through a lot. So insert whatever else. If you don't necessarily think of them as business goals, no, it's business goals too. So I'm it's definitely, that. it's definitely both. Yeah. 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 So think about how your book will advance your goals. Think about how your book it's important because, and I'm guessing the two of, that you've each encountered this and I've had it talked to a lot of friends and peers that sometimes we have this idea that, well, I'm, I, make the book and then it just goes and sells a whole lot or uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, build it and they will come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, so I'm going to skip ahead for actually a second. Getting the book launched is just a start as we know. Right. So here are some things that I'm suggesting are, are things that you might do after your book is launched. There's actually a whole bunch we need to do before the book is launched. I don't know if we want to free flow talk on that, but I'm just going to talk about some things for those of you who maybe have already launched or you're close to launching. These are things you can do for months afterward to help build momentum. Guests speak in other people's communities, get reviews um, from book reviewers and not just at launch time, but the whole year after. And, and then publish those reviews or reshare them on social media. So if someone's writing something on Amazon, how are you cross-posting it on your LinkedIn or your Instagram or your TikTok or wherever your audience is? 
because just because it's out there on Amazon doesn't mean that all these other people are seeing it. So we want to get savvy about how do you always kind of be cross sharing to amplify the reach of your book. Like really you're, you know, be your own best marketer. You could host your own book study. That's something I did um, where most people who came had bought the book or they bought it during. Um, you can make it however you want. I made it where, hey, you don't have to have bought the book. And what happened is some people came to the virtual book studies and then they learned enough about it that they wanted to go and buy it. You can host your own workshops around the content. Again, it's around the content. It's not come to my workshop about my book. It's come to the workshop about XYZ. We're gonna have a conversation about XYZ. Media, subscription boxes. You might wanna do promos and early on for a, the lower priced ebook. Of course, whatever Juliet and Christy recommend go with what they say. Um, I'm now doing a first chapter free um, that helps build, like we're building our, our email list where you get the first chapter free. And then if you like it, then they're more likely to buy it. Bundle packages, social media. So just to be thinking about how you do all this work for your brand, but once you get the foundation, your work is not done. You want to amplify that impact out in the world. Be savvy. So I'm just going to back. Yeah. Even for introverts, <laughs> you have to be, you have to be savvy. <laughs> yeah. And it's also a personal choice, right? That what I want to say is for a lot of authors, I recognize that you feel proud in its accomplishment to get it done. And that's amazing. Like if, if you don't have that specific goal about a certain amount of impact or a certain amount of sales, that's okay. If you are someone who does kind of want bigger reach and expansion, from my perspective, it is possible. We just have to be the ones to be willing to do the work for ourselves. And so it's no judgment if you aren't interested in that. I have a number of friends who are like, no, I felt called to get this book in the world. And once it's out there, my work is done. That's beautiful. But what I don't want is for people who then have, who actually want it to help them write more books or get um, a publishing deal or become a speaker or build a coaching business. And then they're wildly disappointed when that doesn't happen. And my perspective and my advice is it's just like building a business. It's going to take constant yeah. care and nurturing. Yeah. And this is not just the after, uh, Amber. The, these are things that you should have planned out that year before the book. Yeah. You just don't get the book out and go, okay, now I need a workshop. The, your book is that nurture tool to get people to, not get people, but to, when people read it, they understand that you're, you're their person. So what do you have for them that is the next step? And that's probably the biggest challenge we have with our authors is, you know, a, a lot of times you don't get the ROI directly from the book. You get it from what that next step is. So you really have to have that plan in advance and say, okay, I'm going to launch the book in September. And then we're going to do our first workshop in November. Um, so you really have to have everything laid out in advance. If you wait until the very end, like you said, after to do this, you will be so overwhelmed that nothing will be successful. Hate to say it. Um, absolutely agree. Totally, 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 totally. I'm very much a planner and I have the support of a team and I could have, and I worked on the book for a few years and planned for a year and I could have used more time. So it's, I, as much as I am a progress over perfection and I write about that in the book, uh, again, it's about managing your expectations and what you want to come from it. But I knew I wanted a certain level of oomph from it. So if that, if there is someone like that, be prepared to put all that, that effort in and give yourself a proper runway. For me, that looked like moving the launch back a few times. And again, you have to reach a point where you're like, okay, I need to quit delaying this and just get it out there in the world. But is it better to, okay, I need to delay this for three to six months so I can have a better runway and at least know that I, I did these steps and it'll take you so much further. Yeah. And the, the thing with an author platform too, is it's really about the brand and social media and getting all that marketing, the content into place. I'm a planner too, but I'm one of those, I plan God laughs people, five type of planners. And so, um, but it's good because I have a plan. So at that point, I'm working the obstacles that have been put in front of me instead yes. of 
reinventing the wheel. So it, there, Love that. There, it, because nothing ever, not, not a lot of things go to plan, but when you have the plan and you get out ahead of it, at least this is what I'm hearing. It gives you that roadmap that even when the, the issues pop up, you still know that you have a roadmap that you're moving toward. And so I think part of that is building in some buffer for things that might not go exactly to plan, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you're like down, everything needs to be exactly with your edits or you're finishing things at a certain timeline and you have no space in there in case what if life happens or someone gets sick, we're just not setting ourselves up for success with that. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if anyone here, so Aligned Action, I recommend people to in this journey with your brand as it's evolving. Don't be afraid of the change that brings your brand into alignment. I'm going to skip this part, but it's just to show you all like my brand evolution. Um, it's been quite a journey. Skipping that to sake of time. And Wait, can, can I can I address that for a second? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you guys just saw that brand evolution. You're going to have a brand to start. And you have to understand that as you grow, your brand grows. So you're going to go through a few transformations. My brand looks nothing like it did when I first went into business 11, 12 years ago. Nothing yes. like it. So yeah, that, I, I, I love that you're... you showed her that, that these guys this. Good. Thank you. Well, I awesome. I went back briefly. As you can see, it's right. And I may keep evolving again, but the thing that's true for me are the values, the guiding principles and the core heart of the brand. No matter how I get paid or what I do, my brand goes with me everywhere. People know me for authenticity, helping people align who they authentically are into their life or into their business or into their workplace culture. So like I now work with people in different ways, individuals and companies, but it all roots back to alignment of authenticity, whether you're a human or a company. So um, I do have an, a couple of ways people can work with us. October 6th to the 8th is our retreat from home unleashed live. Depending when people watch this, you might have time to join us. We have a code um, to get $88 off. If you use the code unleashed, I'll put this in the chat. Um, and that is, it's virtual. It's a Thursday night, a Friday and a Saturday morning, and we'll have experiential activities. So you're not just behind the screen the whole time, but anyone who is navigating some element of internal change so that you can have greater external success. It's anything you're walking internally to really become who you authentically desire to be as an author, as a leader. That's what that is around. Unleash Live is meant for that, to help you really embody at your next level who you authentically are. And, and we can go to unleashlive.com. Um, soul-seed.com backslash unleash, or actually just soul-seed.com. There you go. It's there. Dot com. And then we have the unleashed. The event unleashed live is, is at our website, soul seed.com. Yeah. Event. You gave us, you gave us a discount code. So use the discount code unleashed. Yes. Thank you for okay. the reminder. And then otherwise reach out if anyone watching who is exploring and feels that we might support you in your journey, either from the personal aspect or the business aspect, reach out again through our website. You can book a consult. And um, I, I have a year long container, particularly for visionary entrepreneurs. We have a lot of authors, speakers, people of thought leader brands. We include in-person retreats and it's really meant to be supported in community while you're building your brand. So for people who really want to take that brand to a new level, I'd be happy to help people and put on your own crown. There you go. This is a picture from my book launch event. We performed. I sang the Pat Benatar song like I did all those years ago. That's my husband on the guitar. Isn't he so cute? <laughs> and I put on my own crown. And that's what this, the journey is for everyone. Claim it I yourself. love it. I love that you guys just look like you are having the best time. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I'm really, and I'm grateful that the me of a few years ago thought how arrogant would I be to think that I could have an event that's around my book where we sing music and who would ever come. And so as I was on stage, I had a surreal moment where I was like, oh, wow, I'm actually like fully walking the walk of what I teach in this book. Like in this moment, I'm embodying it. And it was really amazing because it was creating community. There was value for people in it. 
I was just a conduit of it, but it wasn't about me. It was about the experience for everybody else. Yeah. Oh, this is great. transformation. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> well, Amber, thank you so much. This was fantastic. Thank you for inviting me. So fun. <laughs> You guys go over, if you're in the chat, I put her and I'll put it over on the live page too, inside Superbrand, uh, where you can pick up her book and then go over to soulseed.com and use that, that code unleashed. What kind of discount does it get you? $88 off. $88 off the $333. You and your yes. numbers. <laughs> What's that? Why 333 and why 88? <laughs> I bet I know. Because they're, yeah, they're angel numbers. They're angel numbers. <laughs> you didn't know. I, yeah. I, so yeah. It, makes it, it makes it $245. You will get an awesome gift from us in the mail. And it's, it's coaching. You're getting group, some one-to-one -one support and some experiences built in. And so there you go. That's awesome. Thank you so much for doing this for the, for, for us today. Amber, thank you. you, thank you. Really, really great to meet you and see you and hear you talk. <laughs> it's fun. Awesome. Awesome. All right, you guys see you next month.